this is center 1308 sir our question is if the message will go to the university level like the what time uh, they have given as a 40 hour for a paper if that will extend it to 60 hour then it is better sir but if we will send the message from our side they are not responding so as a whole the message will go then it is better sir yes so uh, these are issues which are actually outside the scope of this current workshop and anyway for just uh, for the information uh, some of us are working on these issues at the aict level and all so hopefully in a few years or in a few months there may be some change rc 1063 dr dy patil uh, sir my question is related to if we are having some uh, wiki or some interactive techno technique for uh, same topic for one single topic we are using two different interactive techniques and analysis of these two interactive techniques can it make a research paper so uh, at the broad level the answer may be yes but at the detail level you need to look at whether there is novelty in doing such an analysis okay so uh, a research paper will essentially require to determine new knowledge which others do not already know so for example if the analysis is about whether peer instruction uh, students who learn with peer instruction learn better than students who simply learn with classroom then that will not be a research paper because there are already lots of papers on this for various topics so at while at the broad level such questions would make for a good research study you need to look at what is the related work what work has already been published and see whether you have a new angle on such a topic one more question i had that was uh, activity for various subjects can we do a analysis like wiki we did some video clip on wiki we presented and can this same technique be used for various subjects can an analysis of this make a research paper i think the answer is still the same once again you need to see whether such analysis is contributing to the research community see a lot of things it might be some new work that we have done so any new work that we have done does not automatically qualify as research so if there is a good reason to carry out such an analysis and if that analysis is bringing out some new insights which have not already been known and you will be able to make this out only when you see what has already been published on that topic so once you look at what is the literature that is already there then you will be able to answer this question better for yourself and some of the templates that we have like for example the study planning template which you will be exposed to if you sign up for the uh, what was that mission 2015 uh, uh, project then they will guide you to finding answers to these questions rc 1008 how to create group in a wiki that is our question sir okay so again for the information of all the centers who have joined late this question was answered previously but i'll repeat the answer for creating groups in wiki what you have to do is you have to be a creator of a wiki so create a new wiki add users and there is some a feature known as projects on to the right hand side in the wiki that you create so there will be a project window you click the project and create the groups in that so a detailed instruction and documents and specific activities for this will be given to you in the coming week because this is the post workshop activity for this pedagogy workshop so you have to do that particular lesson and create your own wiki rc 1257 sir i want to ask three trivial questions pertaining to the workshop my first question is uh, you have posted some of the link uh, in terms of repositories for the visualization purpose but uh, when we tried to run these simulations uh, message was appeared your security settings are preventing untrusted applications to run furthermore we tried to configure the java configuration panel and adjusted the security to high still the problem was there okay a quick answer to that is this is your uh, problem with the system at your end 
one quick Google query on this particular uh, issue will give you sufficient threads as to what exactly you have to do because it all depends on the operating system, the machine that you are using. So, it all depends on that. So, I would recommend that you post what exact with uh, the screenshots and other things to uh, Google, uh, Google and look at several forums which look at Java based issues or query for flash issues, Adobe, Adobe issues in Google or if you have a system administrator in your uh, college, please ask him to look at the system and uh, rectify it because system administrators will be uh, the correct people to who will be able to solve this issue. RC 12008 Regional Center of Anna University. Thanks for organizing wonderful workshop. The workshop is really very much useful for us. We learn many technology tools and uh, repository websites. My question is related to wiki. Suppose uh, form a group using wiki for a particular course. If possible to send a group message through wiki to the students or if any possible this uh, feature in uh, Moodle also. Okay, the query is about sending group messages through wiki or Moodle. So, uh, it is possible to send uh, messages to all wiki participants or specifically to project participants the moment you create those projects. So, uh, for example, if you are in wiki for trial, there is an option send message and it asks to whom. So, in the list to all participants or to specific participants. Uh, it is provided, the option is provided in that. Similarly, in Moodle also, you can broadcast a message to groups. So, you can create a forum which is accessible only for the group and post a message over there. So, this is how you do uh, broadcasting to groups in Moodle. The same applies for wiki spaces also. Discussion forums in a group page, post the message and broadcast it. RC 1313. Sir, uh, does the TPS activity work on interdisciplinary environment? If yes, to what extent, sir? Okay, a uh, quick answer to it. Uh, did the TPS activity that we posted work in your remote center? So, all the TPS activities that we had, so we were catering to different domains of teachers and there was this common goal. So, the TPS activity will work for all environments provided your think phase, pair phase and share phase questions have clear cut guidelines are connected to the subject in question and uh, you have some deliverables that come out in each of these phases whether it is an individual discipline or a multidisciplinar environment. 1042 St. Gitts College. Is it possible to implement the same concept uh, using wiki the same in the model? Yes, it is. So, the question that St. Gitts College posted is, is it possible to implement wikis inside Moodle? So, the answer is yes, Moodle has a wiki functionality embedded in it. We have not used that functionality in this workshop because we wanted the resources to be available to all uh, the outside world also. The content repositories had to be open. That is why we have not used the wiki functionality in Moodle. But if you want to use wiki functionality in Moodle, there is a specific plugin called wikis. You can create a wiki activity in Moodle and do the same as what we did. 1071 Amrita Vishwadhyaya Peetam. This is a great uh, workshop that I attended, one of the few great workshops. I have a question. Actually, the idea is idea sounds good, but uh, across India, do we have the resources uh, to implement in real world situations? Number one. Number two, uh, in a, let us say you have a three credit course and you have roughly about 45 classes. And uh, you know, uh, a student registers for more than five courses in a semester and uh, think about uh, sending concept understanding level, uh, but understanding level lectures through video you post it and you conduct flipped class in the classroom through problem solving at a higher cognitive levels. Uh, will the student not complain saying that the concepts have not been 
even after teaching the concepts in the class uh, the students feedback is always that uh, the teachers don't teach the concepts properly so having said this how are we going to balance this approach okay so let me take the second question first so one of the things that you have to make it clear to the students is that the total amount of time that they are spending on studies is not increasing typically what you would do is in the classroom you would give them the information at the understanding level and then they would have the worksheet or the practice problems which they have to solve on their own later on all that you are doing is you are flipping that so students you will find once you start implementing this you will find that they appreciate this idea because the time when they need the help is when they are actually trying to apply the concepts and at that time the instructor and the TAs are available so even if they might feel that look they are having to do additional work what is required is that the total amount of work for a three credit course or a six credit course is not going to be more for those students who only work just before the exam for them yes it will appear as though there is more work but for students who are who do the required amount of work this will not be more work for the first question about you know implementing such changes across the country so we can only start one institute at a time and we could start with your institute and in your institute once you make a step to make these changes slowly it will per percolate so right now we have about 200 institutes which have signed up with us and slowly we will keep on increasing this number so we don't expect any changes to happen within a very short period of time but we are moving towards making changes rc 1028 we are uh, very thankful to you for organizing such a wonderful workshop so i just want to ask you uh, the query regarding uh, that other technological tools ict based technological tools we had gone through uh, already wikis then tps activities pi activities is there any other activities that uh, would be very helpful for us to do the teaching effective so if you provide us the link or other any kind of resources that will be very helpful for us so a quick answer to it is refer to the digital blooms taxonomy slides on day 4 so we'll again upload uh, additional resources in moodle as to which all are the different technology tools used for specific purposes at different levels so please go through those lists and try to explore those technologies first and uh, start try different experiments with that technology rc1235 sir my question is in uh, the topic alignment of objective and assessment so now my learning objective is in apply level it means uh, for apply level the student must be able to understand and recall some concept then only he can apply but my question assessment question is in understand level or recall level whether uh, the alignment of assessment and uh, learning objective is aligned or not aligned here actually you have answered your own question while posing it so the question that uh, rc1235 has posted is they have a learning objective at apply level and since apply subsumes recall and understand when they give the question at understand level is the learning objective and assessment question aligned so you have already specified learning objective that i am going to uh, target apply level and you are giving only till understand recall or understand level so this is not aligned for the learning objective that you have mentioned so for uh, proper alignment the learning objective and assessment question has to be at a same level rc1315 my query is within learning strategy can we implement the learning strategy with a good understanding and the average understanding student skills to get to utilize the both of them at the same time yes so the short answer to the question is yes you can implement it with a mixed group also you can form groups and specifically have some uh, high achievers as well as low achievers in a group and implement it or you can let students form their own groups in either case the strategies that we have talked about here will be effective rc1008 my question is on tps activity 
sir is there any standard checklist or guideline through which uh, means we can quickly measure the effectiveness of tps activity okay so uh, there are guidelines by which you can measure but by and large one way in which you can uh, observe is that if you look at how much noise is happening in the class during this activity so initially there won't be much noise and then students will slowly get into the activity and the noise will increase and about 80% of once 80% of the class is discussing that is about the time when you can move on to the next phase of the activity so that is a very quick thumb rule that you can use to measure whether your tps activity is being effective or not otherwise there are other ways of you know using observation protocols and other mechanisms to exactly measure how much engagement or how much learning is happening because of tps but we do not want to go into that in this workshop rc1240 i have two question first one is a it is a collaborative type software so what are the other collaborative software next question is a you want to implement it in our college so which collaborative software we have to use so that okay uh, so basically uh, we just heard the first part of question i would urge you to post the question in chat so that we'll be able to look at it closely the question was what are the other collaborative softwares discussion forums is a classic example of collaborative activities and nowadays most of the new web pages or the new technology that come they have inherently some kind of discussion forums or comment section which are being used for collaboration so unlike wiki they don't have multi simultaneous edit facilities but these can be used for collaboration so i'll just take one question from chat this was posted by siddhaganga institute what they have asked is they have done a question in classroom the same question is asked as a design question in the examination so they are asking what is the level so if it is exactly the same question it may not go beyond uh, apply because they have already practiced this in class and it is the same so that is why in assessment it is required that you give questions which are slightly different and it actually matches the cognitive level 1227 dr jj magdam we have used the wiki for trial now for uh, uploading the question paper and all this thing but can we use this wiki uh, for our further assignments and all these things or how much space we can use it for us so yes you can use wiki the maximum space available for uh, wiki activity is 5 gb so kindly refrain from uploading assignments or files into the wiki use moodle for all the file uploads yeah rc1060 ebt college Sir, my question is is there any psychological training to approach the students so there are lots of such courses but uh, none of them are being offered uh, or may being made compulsory as part of becoming a faculty at any institute so there are disciplines like cognitive science there are disciplines like educational psychology so what we can do is now that MOOCs have become so familiar. If you look for courses on edX uh, or Coursera, you might actually find courses which will help you to uh, be more prepared from the psychological as well as the cognitive science aspect for dealing with your students. RC one zero four two. Sir, uh, actually, we are interested to adopt this particular wiki. So far, we are doing in Moodle. Is it free or is it a payable version? that is question number 1 second okay. thing if you want to get a username for our college what the process we have to do okay so wikis there are uh, free wikis for example media wiki is a free application that you can install in your college it is open source so in case you want to add more plugins to the wiki that is also possible wiki spaces allows you free account but domain name of the account uh, to a certain extent it is possible you have to go through verification procedures and uh, ensure that you are using this wiki for only education purposes and not for any commercial purposes then it will be available for you yeah rc1319 uh, so we have two questions the first one is uh, it is related to digital bloom's taxonomy uh, the question is uh, at the evaluation level 
uh, how does networking which is given in the list of technology tools and methods uh, how does networking helps in checking the cognitive level of evaluation evaluate okay uh, what is your second question if you consider the case of uh, our country what you'll find that many subject domains in which we are teaching our engineering courses and what we have found that uh, there are seriously uh, limited uh, visualization aids available on the given repository by you in this case what institute should expect to do if they have to rely on the visualization aid are they required to grade these aids themselves or they should take the help of this which is not available actually the, the visualization videos are limited in that case what do you advise in that case okay so uh, the visualization is not compulsory so i don't think any institute is going to make it compulsory that every teacher must show so many visualizations in every class so while we agree that the repositories that we have put up may not have the visualizations for your topic there are lots of such open resources that are available so it's a matter of you know either sitting down to search for them yourself or you know have, have one of your tas or you know ask your students to find visualizations you will be surprised at the amount of visualizations that the students would have found without us telling them to do so so even if you ask students so for example in one of the courses when i did not have a sufficient number of visualizations the first assignment that i gave which of course did not have any credit was for students to find four visualizations on that topic and upload it and once that was done we out of those 40 visualizations which were found by students we could easily find five or six of them which were really useful really good which i did not know earlier as part of the repository so that's a very good method that you can use to find visualization so give it as a non credit assignment to students and you will be surprised at how much they find coming to the other question about networking at the uh communication level of evaluate level, evaluate level of uh, digital bloom i really don't know the answer right now i've forgotten what was there at that point so we'll try to answer that over moodle so we'll we'll answer this in moodle we'll look at the exact uh, learning activity that was uh, designed and we'll uh, explain it to you how it comes in uh, evaluate level yeah rc1108 are there any disadvantages of this kind of technologies if we are uh, implementing in our setup particularly so the whole workshop of two weeks has been about talking about advantages and disadvantages so there is so you had debates on advantages and disadvantages of various technologies so it is up to you to use it in situations where the advantage is being played up classrooms okay there is a question on chat on how many schools like iits mit harvard stanford use the flipped classroom strategy the answer to that is all of them how many courses in each of those maybe about 10% of the courses okay uh, there is a question can we have different learning strategies for a same class for a same topic because students learning level are different yeah so the question on can we have different learning strategies for a same class for the same topic yes the answer is yes so once again as a teacher you will have to be aware of which strategy is working for which group of your students and that's where the teacher's creativity comes into play RC 1316 Dronacharya College Good evening to everyone it was really a very very fruitful session and we uh, came to uh, learn a lot about uh, how to implement uh, good teaching perspectives inside the classroom now some of the questions uh, which were hovering in my mind uh, was like uh, we came to know about flipped classroom uh, now my question is uh, suppose we are trying to implement the uh, concept of flipped classroom and on a fine day we come to the class i mean i go into the class and see that uh, probably 50% of the students have watched the videos and have uh, seen all the information that have been transmitted and the other half they have uh, not seen uh, the uh, data that has been transmitted so in that case what do we do how do we uh, make it effective so a quick answer to that is you start with refreshing the class uh, about what was discussed in video maybe put up one or two questions wherein discussion is allowed between people who have watched and people who have not watched so this will make sure that 
the people who have not watched get an idea of what was there in the video and then you can start the session uh, that you intend to do. So usually when uh, for example when I start my class there is usually a open uh, PI question you a PI question or some kind of a thought provoking question which is displayed on the uh, screen while the students are walking in. So at that time itself some discussion starts and uh, you could you can also formalize this by having some weightage or some quick quiz at, at the beginning of the class to ensure that students have watched the video. But attempting to ensure that 100% of your students watch the video before they come to class is not a viable exercise because there will always be some who will not watch it and you just have to let it go. So Knowledge Institute of Technology. Sir, our question is, we have interacted with the students about the ICT uh, tools uh, and we have explained the, the sessions what we have so far and the students side also they have some questions so in the angle in this angle as a faculty I have a question so how to in order to measure the students uh, employability skills how this ICT tools can be implemented or can you suggest a strategy by specifying a tool that can be used your the employability skills and also the success rate of a student. Okay, so in order to measure employability, again, see if you look at it from the perspective of the employer, they have certain objectives. So once, or unless you know those objectives, you cannot make out whether your students can meet those objectives. So the idea is very similar to alignment between learning objectives and assessments. So if your learning objectives are geared towards what the employers required, and if you're then and your assessment is geared towards the learning objectives then automatically you are guaranteeing that there is some employability of those students so beyond that there is no specific answer that can be given for this question uh, a useful method is make sure that the basic requirements of uh, the computer basic computer literacy is there present among the students allow them to use different mechanisms uh, different tools for projects or presentations in that way you will at least ensure that the technical knowledge of using the tools is available with the students. So beyond this we cannot give you any specific strategy on that. Okay, so there is one question on the chat window which says I had used uh, flipped classroom and got the feedback and asked student to solve the problems. I got the feedback that the concepts are not clear. What could be the problem? So there could be couple of reasons one could be that the concepts were not properly explained in the video itself so the choice of the video the other could be that the solving of the problems that may not have been at the same level of as in the video itself both of these are possibilities so what you could do in this case is that you could take some time from the solving of the problem so while they are solving the problem you can do some short PI questions to ensure that the concepts become clear before they start to solve the problem. So that is a strategy which you can use. So you can anticipate that there may be some students for whom this concept is not clear and so come up with some PI questions which you can use as a revision to ensure that everybody has understood uh, the concept before they start applying that to solve the problems. Okay, there's one more question on how to propagate the idea of flipped classroom to the student community. So, uh, student community you will find uh, really enjoys this uh, flipped classroom model for various reasons. One is that they can watch the video at their own time. Second, there is the notion of you know, pausing it, replaying it and so on. So, if, if you simply start using it in your uh, classes, I mean, once again, it's not necessary that you must use it all the time. But the moment you start using it, you will find that students are favorably oriented towards use of the flipped classroom. Ha, there is one more question on are there any disadvantages like students perception that everything is available without attending class. So that is one important perception that has to be addressed. So what you have to make it clear to them is that only the information transmission part is available without attending the class. The part of where they have to do the work to apply is not exactly available in the sense that you are facilitating it in the class. So once we talk to students a few times, 
then they will get the idea of why it is necessary to come to the class. There may still be people who are only relying on the information transmission part and simply look at the videos before coming to the exam. And that is something that which we will just have to live with. Uh, there's one more question about can we take into account learner style while writing the learning objectives? Uh, learning objectives they are not uh, really uh, uh, the same as taking into account learner style. So you can take into account the learner style when you choose an instructional strategy rather than when you are de uh, deciding the learning objectives. Okay, so with that I think there are no other queries that uh, need to be looked at in the chat window also. And if there are any other queries we will take it up in the Moodle. Uh, and with this we will come to the close of this face to face part of the workshop. B keep in mind that the workshop is not over. There is also one more three days left where you have to do the um, assignment on the wiki projects and there will be an another couple of assignments and that's when and there will be sufficient time for you to do the do those assignments and uh, hopefully you have all benefited and will be able to use at least a few of these strategies in your classes and will get good feedback from your students which will encourage you to continue to use these strategies as you go along. Thank you very much.